From In the Heights to In the Earth, the new trippy horror freakout from Ben Wheatley. What do you want? Everything seems to just keep us here. Last we heard of Ben Wheatley, he had ventured outside his comfort zone and that of his fan base by doing a big conventional period romantic drama for Netflix starring Lily James and Army Hammer, namely a new version of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, which was a bit pointless, although it did give us something approximating the traditional Ben Wheatley collective narcosis euphoria moment for the party scene in which the heroine is tricked into wearing Rebecca's gown. In the Earth is a return to classic Wheatley, a woodland folk horror whose third act will consist effectively in an abandonment of narrative structure in favour of a colossal drug-induced freakout. Now, it is arguably slightly familiar stuff, I admit, and this is another horror film where we have to be told, early doors, that there is no signal for mobile phones. But I do have to say that with Wheatley, I always enjoy the sheer strangeness and malice in the air, along with the unwholesome tang of shrooms. Wake up. Something's there. Listen. Someone's watching us. The scene is a post-pandemic Britain, traumatised by the mass infection and alienated from Mother Nature herself, and Joel Fry is quietly excellent as Martin, an earth scientist who is journeying into a dense and inaccessible English woodland because he understands that it contains supremely rich and fertile soil, which we badly need for food production. He has with him a guide, Alma, played by Elora Torchia, who is also very good. Together they play the material dead straight, while also letting you sense the bat squeak of black comedy, especially when they chance across a strange strange hermit in this wood, played by Reese Shearsmith. What I love about Wheatley's trippy films, and this one incidentally reminds me very much of his barking mad 17th century level of freakout, A Field in England, set in Cromwellian times, is their celebration of irrationality. That tends to be the final point, insofar as there is a point. We are not leading logically to any sort of narrative revelation. It is all going to be topped off with a gigantic tide of hallucinatory weirdness, like the last crashing chord in the Beatles' A Day in the Life. In the Earth is in cinemas now. I should now, once again, in accordance with time-honoured tradition, mention my book, published by Bloomsbury, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. Please also give these vlogs a like and a share on social media and subscribe and leave a comment to say that you've subscribed and tell me what your favourite film is. Until next time.